All right, hi guys. So let's discuss the pharmacology question that was asked in our computer-based offline test. Now I saw there were around 20 plus question from pharmacology and most of the questions were pretty easy and some were directly from previous year topics as well. And I'm pretty sure that most of you have got it correct. Majority of uh, you have got most of the questions correct. Now let us see what are the area where you could have avoided, uh, you know, the silly mistakes and what are the things that you should be aware in the upcoming examination. Now this CBOT or the grand test discussion that we are going to do is going to be important with respect to the things that we will be discussing after the other options, right? Uh, I mean, uh, about the other option, whatever we discuss, uh, please take care of that as well. The very first question that we got here was about a patient who got under treatment for colorectal carcinoma and for the colorectal carcinoma, remember the drug of choice, drug of choice for colorectal carcinoma that we know is a 5-fluorouracil. Okay, so this is one information given already. He is now experiencing diarrhea. See, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea is always seen. And here, actually, the question is, examiner is asking the question that if there is a patient with the chemo-induced, chemo-induced diarrhea. Now, earlier, they were asking questions like chemo-induced nausea and vomiting. But this time, there is chemo-induced diarrhea. Which of the following is the most appropriate drug? So, chemo-induced diarrhea, ke liye, uh, opioid like loperamide is the most appropriate drug. As a matter of fact, Loperamide is considered as a drug of choice for this scenario. Correct answer for this one is going to be B. Now, another question examiner which can frame or I, examiner has asked already that if there is a patient coming to you with the chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting and this answer to this question is pretty simple that is going to be your 5-ST3 antagonist by the name of your ondansetron. 5-ST3 antagonist by the name of ondansetron. All right. So this was uh, your first question. Now, atropine has no uh, utilization here. Alone, atropine will not be effective. Or nidazole, it's again from the gram negative. And uh, ciprofloxacin is one of the fluoroquinolone that can again be utilized in GI infection. But again, for the chemo induced diarrhea, we'll be using loperamide as a drug of choice. Your 62 year old uh, female had a past history of acute episode of chest pain and tightness with ST depression. Okay. And changes on ECG on few occasion. She is now prescribed medication for prophylaxis of her condition. Okay, so she presented to the OPD with headache and constipation. All right, so simply examiner is asking which of the following drug will be causing headache, constipation for the past month. Which of these could be the drug that was prescribed to her causing these symptoms? Now, constipation is something, uh, see, nausea, vomiting, ye hota rata, diarrhea, bhi hota rata. but whenever it comes to, you know, constipation, constipation is something which is mainly associated with your calcium channel blocker by the name of your diltiazem, your DHPs, dihydropyridines, or your non-DHPs. DHPs or non-DHPs, they both are actually associated with your constipation because they both can cause relaxation of the smooth muscle especially with respect to intestine and they are very common i mean if you are going to compare constipation with any other drug in the antihypertensive drug diltiazem and dhps may call like dhps may all the dpins you know, they will always stop the list others can be associated with your diarrhea or other gi symptom but again constipation is not very common and a propranolol is the beta blocker nicorandil now nicorandil is something that you should know what is nicorandil actually nicorandil it's one of the drug that is the next best alternative to nitrates it is uh, one of the drug that is utilized in a patient with the angina. It is utilized in a patient with the angina. It is a source of nitric oxide, nicorandil. In addition to it being a source of nitric oxide, remember it is also one of the potassium channel opener. It is also one of the potassium channel opener, mainly utilized in a patient with the uh, you know, angina. Isosorbide dinitrate can also be utilized in uh, you know, angina. They can be associated with headache, but not commonly your constipation is a side effect. 67 year old male presented with complaints of difficulty in urination, back pain, okay, difficulty in urination, back pain, elevated PSA, prostate specific antigen, and x ray revealed two radiolucent lesion on uh, in the bony pelvis. Okay, so radiolucent lesion in the bony pelvis, high level of PSA, they are actually suggestive of a prostatic carcinoma that is uh, possibly, you know, already has started uh, you know, metastasis. MRI reveal large lymph node, okay, so there is lymphatic uh, evidence as well in the lower abdomen, which of the following drug can most likely be used. So, in a condition like this, we will be using the drugs like your, uh, you know, uh, goserlin, 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 what are they? They are actually the drugs that is known as your GNRH analog. They are actually your GNRH analog. So, whenever we are going to give this one, 
and a GnRH analog uh, on the continuous dosing, it will be acting as an antagonist. Continuous dosing will be acting as an antagonist. Other agent that can be utilized for this condition, other agent or other drug that can be utilized will be your Diga relics. They are the antagonists. Na? Diga relics, Cetro relics. They are the antagonists. Na? Last may X word are, that is cross. They are the antagonists of the GnRH. Okay. Other agents actually, uh, some of them like let's say anastrozole and all can be utilized but again whenever you have to choose one gosaraline it will be the preferred over other agent that is given here a 73 year old man presented with a shortness of breath wheezing he has a 50 pack year uh, smoking history on examination vitals are normal except for the blood pressure which is 168 okay so bp is high on previous visit bp was this so bp is still high what they are trying to say you know in a uh, grade 2 already you know Another examination finding is given below. So if you can see here, uh, the image, uh, you know, this is possibly a case of your peripheral vascular disease, possibly a case of, let's say, Raynaud's syndrome, yeah, Raynaud's phenomena, right? Where the, the there is, uh, 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 fingers are turning, uh, you know, uh, quite dark or I would say blackish, you know? Now, which of the following antihypertensive agent is contraindicated in this one? Now, lisinopril, what is lisinopril, guys? Lisinopril is one of the ACE inhibitor. There is no such a contraindication of ACE inhibitor in a patient with the peripheral vascular disease. Nadolol, what is uh, Nadolol? Nadolol is a non selective beta blocker. Non selective beta blocker. Prazosine is one of the alpha 1 blocker, all the zocine are alpha 1 blocker. Now, one more thing that I would like to highlight here in a patient with a peripheral uh, vascular disease like Raynaud syndrome, the most preferred agent that we are going to use is always going to be calcium channel blocker, dipines like amlodipine, nifedipine. They are the most preferred. In addition to that, we can utilize other, like let's say others like nitrate, we can utilize, we can also utilize prazosine, terazosine, that is. Uh, alpha 1 blocker can also be utilized, right? Alpha 1 blocker can also be utilized. All these agents can be utilized. Now, bisoprolol. Bisoprolol is one of the cardio selective beta blocker. It is one of the cardio selective beta blocker. Can we use cardio selective beta blocker? The answer is yes. Now, uh, if you are going to see uh, alpha 1 blocker, they are definitely going to be utilized, right? Can we use nadolol? The answer is no. Why not? Because nadolol is something that can aggravate. Actually, in a patient with a peripheral vascular disease, we give beta blocker with much precaution. Reason being that when we talk about a selective or non-selective beta blocker, the non-selective beta blocker, like let's say nadolol as a drug, they are going to block beta 1 and they are also going to block beta 2. You see, if they are going to block beta 1, definitely the heart rate will decrease. We are okay with it because you know, we have to reduce the blood pressure. But if they are going to block beta 2, beta 2 normally causes vasodilatation. Beta 2 normally causes vasodilatation. And whenever beta 2 is associated with vasodilatation, but if you block beta 2, now there will be apparent vasoconstriction because alpha tone will be high. There will be apparent vasoconstriction and therefore it can always and always precipitate a condition like peripheral vascular disease. Therefore, it is always and always said that the non-selective beta blocker, non-selective beta blocker are going to be contraindicated in following condition. Non-selective uh, beta blocker are going to be contraindicated in patient with the bronchial asthma, in patient with the peripheral vascular disease. Uh, right in patient with your diabetes also in diabetes non-selective beta blocker can actually cause masking of the hypoglycemic symptom they can cause masking of the hypoglycemic symptom right let me just put it a little more up so these are the areas in which non-selective beta blockers are actually contraindicated so do remember this one bpd is a very very simple mnemonic bpd bronchial asthma mein nahi denge, peripheral vascular disease mein nahi denge, and also in diabetes mellitus also we are not going to give bpd is a very very Simple mnemonic where we are not going to give. Which of the following drug does not require any renal or I would say any dose modification in patient with the chronic kidney disease? Glyburide, ripaglinide, saxagliptin, lina. Now, this was a straightforward question, has been repeated many a number of times. The answer to this question is lina glyptin. Glyptin, all the glyptins actually coming from the DPP4 inhibitor. DPP4 inhibitor, they are all excreted renally, renally, you know, they are all excreted renally, except, except, you know, all the DPP4 inhibitor excreted renally, except your lina glyptin. So, lina ko kaise aap karne ke liye bolta hoon, lina ko mein bolta hoon, lina liver se excreted hoon, lina is getting excreted via the hepatic root, and that is why it is said that lina glyptin, it is a safest one, in a patient with the renal failure, all dose adjustment is not required in renal failure. 
Another important question that can be framed that they are going to be contraindicated in hepatic failure patient. They are going to be contraindicated in hepatic failure patient or dose adjustment may require in hepatic failure patient. Which of the following anti-dyslipidemic drug uh, is the drug of choice in pregnancy? Anti-dyslipidemic drug of choice in pregnancy. Visa fibrate, rosuvastatin, cholestamine. Now, anti-dyslipidemic drug of choice uh, uh, in pregnancy is always your bile acid sequestrants and a bile acid sequestrant, which we also call them as a, a resins, right? They are going to be drugs like your cholestipol, the drugs like your cholestipol, drugs like your cholesteramine, cholestipol, cholesteramine, cholesevelam, and a cholesevelam. Now, this, all these drugs that we have, cholesterolam, cholesterol, cholesteramine, they are bile acid sequestrant. They are the bile acid chelator in the intestine. The site of action of these drugs is actually in the intestine. They are not working at the circulation level, working at the intestine level. That is why they are considered the safest or most preferred, safest or most preferred in a pregnant female and also in the pediatric population. Pregnancy and pediatrics, right? So, cholesteramine is the one. Now, let's quickly rule out other option. Azetimide is an easy peasy drug. It, they, it is going to inhibit the cholesterol absorption from the intestine. Cholesterol absorption for, you know, from the intestine by inhibiting a transporter known as your NPC1L1, right? Name and pick like one transporter. Rosuvastatin is one of the statins, right? It's one of the statins. That is one of the HMG CoA reductase. आपके exam में एक बार question आया था, उसमें आया था HMG CoA synthase. No, option में synthase भी था, reductase भी था. It is one of the HMG CoA reductase inhibitor. Visa fibrate, they are all fibrates. Visa fibrate, clo fibrate, pheno fibrate, they are the PPAR, PPAR, fibrate, PPAR, alpha agonist. They act by nuclear receptor and increase the level of an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. That lipoprotein lipase will be causing breakdown of the triglycerides okay so this was your quick summary of important anti dyslipidemic drug all right next one which of the following dmr require regular monitoring of the visual acuity and fundus this is one of the previous year neat bg question and the answer to this question is straightforward hydroxychloroquine because it's actually associated with your bull's eye maculopathy this bull's eye maculopathy is actually an irreversible phenomena bull's eye maculopathy it's an irreversible phenomena Okay, methotrexate as a matter of fact, remember guys, it's one of the dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor. They are actually associated with your megaloblastic anemia. Methotrexate associated with your megaloblastic anemia. Methotrexate can be also associated with other side effects. There are many other side effects like let's say hepatotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, crystalluria, crystalluria. And sulfur salazine, it's uh, one of the uh, sulfur compound not having any uh, visual related side effect, neither does leflunomide. So, correct answer for this one is going to be hydroxychloroquine. A 29 year old woman uh, who has been consistently taking oral contraceptive pill for the past six months experiences an unintended pregnancy. Okay, so oral contraceptive pill and she uh, conceived that means there is a contraceptive failure. And, uh, and always remember, I used to tell you that there is something called enzyme inducer let me write the complete word enzyme inducer and there in there, there is something called enzyme inhibitor meri kahani agar aapko yaad hai if you remember my story i used to tell you nearby you know, whenever the examination is near whenever you are easily getting induced the risk of failure will be high enzyme inducer will always be associated with your treatment failure now this is going to be earlier they used to ask you which is enzyme inducer which is inhibitor but now instead of asking that they said that okay now this student is uh, aware about this already let's ask the clinical application of this one huh? you should be aware about this as well that what will be the outcome of enzyme inducer and what will be the outcome of inhibitor so inducer if you are getting induced around the examination there will be high risk of failure getting inhibited if there is too much inhibition and i remember i used to tell you a story that a type of toxicity will develop inside you and uh, no, there will be sudden outburst so again there will be increase in the risk of toxicity inhibitor will have increased in the risk of toxicity now see here contraceptive failure again possibly due to associated with your enzyme inducer examiner is asking why on ocp um, is least likely to occur with which of the following okay contraceptive failure is least likely to occur uh, occur with which of the following now phenobarbitone is a barbiturate which is one of the enzyme inducer they can be associated with the, your contraceptive failure Penitoin is an enzyme inducer. 
Valproate, the only anti-epileptic drug, the only anti-epileptic drug that is not having inducing property, or rather it is having inhibiting property is Valproate. And remember my mnemonic, Peacock wala aega inhibit karke jayega, where P stands for protease inhibitor, erythromycin, then next is your amiodron, and uh, uh, next is your uh, cimetidine, omeprazole, ciprofloxacin, ketoconazole, and wala will be Valproate. Peacock wala, I just narrated the uh, drugs that are example under the enzyme inhibitor. So VALA is valproate. It's one of the very, very potent enzyme inhibitor and all the enzyme inhibitor will have increasing the risk of toxicity rather than treatment failure or drug failure. Rifampicin is a very potent enzyme inducer. Okay. A 67 year old male patient presented with acute onset of palpitation, chest discomfort and uh, a tachycardia uh, with a variable heart rate uh, within a short period of time. The cardiologist posted posture in the ER at the time uh, diagnosed a supraventricular tachycardia. Supraventricular arrhythmia in the patient based on ECG and other suggestive finding. Which of these drugs act primarily by blocking sodium channel? Okay, so there is a case of supraventricular tachycardia or I would say arrhythmia. And an examiner is asking which of the following is acting primarily by sodium channel. So sodium channel blocker, if you are going to see, it is uh, drugs like your class 1, 2, 3 and 4. All uh, these are anti arrhythmic drugs 1, 2, 3, 4. Out of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 is mainly your sodium channel blocker. 2 is the beta blocker, 3 is the potassium channel blocker, 4 is the calcium channel blocker, 1, 2, 3, 4. Out of them, class 1 is sodium channel blocker. But 1 ke further 3 part hote na, 1 is further subdivided into 3 important area. That is 1A, 1B and 1C. 1A stand for your, they all are having sodium channel blocker with the potassium channel blocking property. 1B stand for your sodium channel blocker with the potassium channel opening property. And 1C is the only sodium channel blocker. They have no property on the potassium. I mean, very less action on the potassium. So we consider it as a negligible action at the potassium. Only sodium channel blocker. Okay. Now, 1A may, A grid people. Uh, now, uh, in my story, if you remember, A grid people, I used to tell you a story that there is a kingdom having A grid, B grid, and C grid people. A grid people are going to be all going to be your people like your queen. So, quinidine. Then there is going to be procainamide. Queen Prince, and then there is going to be your disopyramide. Disopyramide. So, Queen Prince and Dasi. That is A grade people. This is going to be all A grade people. Then, B grade people, they are the brave people. Brave, brave people, those who are always saying, always bragging about their power, that I am so brave that they all like to phone me. I am so brave that they all like to phone me. Yeh mnemonic ho gaya. Like to phone me, lidocaine, tokenite, tokenite, phone me is actually phenytoin, 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 me is maxillitine, right? Mnemonic likhi ke saad, agar aap likh rahe ya agar aap yaadi ho to like to phone me. I am so brave that they all like to phone me. One C, they are doing all the C grade wala work, C grade wala work that is, that is floor per mopping etc. Floor per mopping etc. That is going to be your flicanite. Flicanide, propafenone, flicanide, propafenone, moricizine, and NK9. So, this is mnemonic simple and you can remember it very, very easily about a kingdom which I was talking that is having A grade people like Queen Prince and Dasi. Queen Prince and Dasi. B grade, they are all brave people, those who are you know, uh, protecting the kingdom. And they say, I'm so brave that they all like to phone me. And C grade, they C grade wala kaam karte us kingdom mein, floor per mopping etc. Ye C grade wala kaam aali us kingdom ka ho gaya. So, flicanide, propafenone, morisine, and canide. So, only one that is having, uh, all three are having sodium channel blocker. But uh, C is, one C is having only sodium channel blocking property. Now, what is Verapamil? It is one of the class 4 anti-arrhythmic drug. It's a calcium channel blocker. Propranolol is a class 2 anti-arrhythmic drug. It's a beta blocker. Magnesium is one of the miscellaneous group of anti-arrhythmic drug. Flicanide, floor per mopping, etc. is the correct answer. They are class 1C anti-arrhythmic drug. Flicanide, class 1C anti-arrhythmic drug. Remember, they are also considered the drug of choice in a patient with the WPW syndrome, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Next, that we are having about a 16-year-old boy comes to the OPD with the right knee swelling, uh, but can wear weight and has no great abnormality. Over the last few months, he has had fatigue and pain occurring in variable joint across the body. 
and characteristic rash characteristic rash if you are going to see and involving the joint and remember we call it as a target lesion target lesion okay what is correct regarding the first line target lesion and involvement of the joint what could be the possible diagnosis no gait abnormality uh, fatigue be some non specific symptom we are having and uh, so possibly this target lesion is associated mainly in a condition called your lyme disease and lyme disease ke liye jo drug of choice hota hai the drug of choice for lyme disease that we know is your doxycycline doxycycline is a drug of choice this doxycycline being a drug of choice it is one of the 30s inhibitor it's one of the 30s inhibitor so correct answer for this question is going to be your tetracycline is 30s ribosomal unit pe kaam karne wale drug hai na they are the protein synthesis inhibitor doxycycline is one of the protein synthesis inhibitor targeting your 30s ribosome 30s protein ko target karke kaam karte hai right so i hope it is uh, pretty clear to all of you guys uh next question is going to be about a 42 year old lady presenting in emergency with severe breath tightness while running on the treadmill the patient has had severe uh, milder symptom while running or when she had a cold chest examination revealed polyphonic wheezes bilaterally as a nasal polyp okay nasal polyp severe breathlessness emergency again could be possibly a case of bronchial asthma right nasal polyp which of the following has the greatest chance of precipitating similar attack and so bronchial asthma patient asthmatic patient we always remember whenever we give any of the cox inhibitor any of the cox inhibitor there will be less prostaglandin formation apart from that cox inhibitor will always and always lead to increase because jo bhi hamara uh, cyclooxygenase pathway tha wo to block ho gaya what we know here that we are having phospholipid which is actually converted with the help of phospholipase a2 to arachidonic acid now over arachidonic acid two enzyme is going to work cox enzyme will be causing prostaglandin formation and five lipoxygenase enzyme is going to cause leukotriene formation leukotriene whenever they are going to act at the bronchial smooth muscle they will be causing bronchoprostriction at any point of time if you are going to give your patient cox inhibitor what will happen this entire arachidonic acid cycle arachidonic acid pathway will now be shifted towards more and more leukotriene and more leukotriene will always and always lead to uh, you know precipitation of the problem so examiner is asking which of the following drug has the greatest risk of precipitating similar attack in this patient the answer to this question is aspirin so this is a aspirin sensitive patient actually and if you are going to see there is a nasal polyp as well there is a nasal polyp there is a bronchial asthma hai na there is a bronchial asthma right aspirin sensitivity aspirin sensitivity and polyp this bap ye yeah, this bap that we have bronchial asthma aspirin sensitivity and nasal polyp they are also given the name in ent you must have read about it in ent you must have read about it this one we call this one as a samters triad samters triad ठीक है इन अ पेशेंट विद एस्पिरिन सेंसिटिविटी और नेजल पॉलिप इज सीन एंड देयर विल बी हाई रिस्क ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेशन ऑफ द ब्रोंकियल आस्मा सो अगेन देयर आर टू रीजन व्हाई आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट एस्पिरिन विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर और नॉट स्टेरॉइड स्टेरॉइड विल प्रोवाइड यू नो अ रिलीफ थियोफाइलिन इज अ फास्फोडाइएस्टेज इनहिबिटर दे विल हैव नो सच एक्शन लाइक पॉलिप और लाइक सेम गोस फॉर योर कैप्टोपलिन a 25 year old female with overdosage of a drug the physician uh, looked at the bottle and plant for forced diuresis by causing alkalinization of the urine forced alkaline diuresis simply examiner is asking forced alkaline diuresis if you have to change the urine ph to more alkaline this will be mainly done in the acidic drug poisoning it will be mainly drug done in the acidic drug poisoning what are the example of the acidic drug poisoning guys the example of the acidic drug poisoning is going to be aspirin other example can be your barbiturate aspirin barbiturate hai na other drugs are also there like chlorpropamide chlorpropamide hai na they are all uh, example of the acidic drug acidic drug poisoning jahan kahin bhi antidote available nahi hota we can do forced alkaline diuresis now always and always remember that a drug is never a strong acid or a strong base hai na they are always going to be your you know a weak acid so weak acidic poisoning may alkalinization of the urine will be required hai na theek hai a drug that is having high volume distribution uh uska usme will be needing chelators hai na chelators or antidotes will be required 
एंटीडोट्स विल बी बिकॉज अगर हाई वॉल्यूम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है दैट मीन दैट ड्रग है मोस्टली गॉन टू द टिश्यूज फोर्स एल्कलाइन डायरेक्स रिमेंबर इन एसिडिक ड्रग पॉइजनिंग एंड नो ड्रग इज स्ट्रॉग एसिड और स्ट्रॉग बेस इसी का एक काउंटर पार्ट होता है फोर्स एसिडिक डायरेसिस तो फोर्स एसिडिक डायरेसिस किस में करते हैं फोर्स एसिडिक डायरेसिस इट इज डन मेनली इन अ पेशेंट विद द बेसिक ड्रग पॉइजनिंग इन अ बेसिक ड्रग पॉइजन जहां कहीं भी एंटीडोट अवेलेबल नहीं होता है जैसे कि एट्रोपिन नाउ एट्रोपिन का एंटीडोट यूजली होता है फाइसोस्टिकमिन इफ फाइसोस्टिकमिन इज नॉट देयर वी कैन यूटिलाइज फोर्स एसिडिक डायरेसिस स्टेप राइट स्ट्राइचिन इन स्ट्राइचिन इन you can easily uh, you know identify the basic drug is going to be in basic drug is going to be in strychnine amphetamine amphetamine theek hai all of them all of them they are ending with the in theek hai atropine strychnine and na quinine all of them are example of your basic right basic drug that will be requiring your forced acidic diuresis forced acidic diuresis this will be requiring forced alkaline diuresis okay no drug is strong acid or strong base now uh, there is a 61 year old man reported the fever night sweat and productive cough occasional hemoptysis so they have given a x ray already possibly a case of you know uh, tb because hemoptysis night sweat productive cough empirical treatment is initiated based on this symptom in follow up visit several months later the patient complains of difficulty in reading newspaper okay so anti tubercular drug has been given now he is having difficulty reading newspaper in the morning and has been observed wearing unconventional color combination at work okay because again there is a color uh, uh, blindness ki taraf uh, they are trying to uh, you know uh, put to your attention what is the most probable cause of the recent symptom again ocular side effect from the anti tubercular drug is caused mainly by ethambutol ethambutol is mainly emb ethambutol it is actually associated with your optic neuritis associated with what optic neuritis this ethambutol that is associated with your optic neuritis and they can actually cause your red green color blindness they will cause what red green color blindness so again uh, which ocular which anti tubercular drug causing ocular side effect the answer is in front of you that is your ethambutol rifampicin can produce uh, uh, multiple other side effect like rifampicin can cause you know uh, hepatotoxicity rifampicin can cause hepatotoxicity flu like symptom red orange urine red orange urine ye rifampicin ke liye isoniazid can also produce hepatotoxicity peripheral neuropathy pyrazinamide pyrazinamide most hepatotoxic pyr sabse toxic hota hai most hepatotoxic i used to tell you and most hepatotoxic and they can also increase the level of uric acid and you know? uric acid that means it can precipitate gout as well theek hai g protein coupled receptor that does not act through opening of the potassium channel now opening of the potassium channel is mainly seen opening of the potassium channel is mainly associated with your gi gi jo hota hai ye do tarah se kaam karte hain one is they act by inhibiting your adenylate cyclase and therefore there will be less conversion of your atp to cyclic amp lesser atp will be broken down to cyclic amp so cyclic amp will always and always be lesser another way is that they are also going to open the acetylcholine sensitive potassium channel and this potassium channel when they open open the potassium channel they will be causing potassium ka efflux potassium ka efflux that will be causing hyperpolarization of the membrane okay so all of the following or examiner is asking which of the following does not act through opening of the potassium so all of the following acting through gi except so gi ke through jo example ka hote hain maine example aapko diya hai adoms a d o m s h adoms that is going to be alpha 2 dopamine 2 opioid m2 m4 5 ht1 histamine 3 or 4 right histamine 3 and 4 so dopamine 2 5 ht1 m2 is sare ke sare aage angiotensin 1 at1 receptor at1 receptor remember guys they are mainly going to act via gq which is acting through your ip3 and dag pathway do remember a very important thing that this is one of the previous year aims question not previous year i mean two years ago 
एम्स या आईआरआईसीटी में ये क्वेश्चन आया होता है अराउंड 2020 में आई इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग द लास्ट एम्स बिफोर दिस इट वाज मोस्ट टू आईआरआईसीटी दिस क्वेश्चन वाज देयर ठीक है दिस इज गोइंग टू एक्ट वाया जीक्यू जीक्यू वाले जो होते हैं मैं आपको एक सिंपल सा निमोनिक भी बताया होगा कि मैथ्स इज ऑलवेज क्वेश्चनेबल मैथ्स इज क्वेश्चनेबल है ना मैथ्स एम ए ए टी एच एस मैथ्स इज क्वेश्चनेबल सो दिस मैथ्स स्टैंड फॉर योर एम स्टैंड फॉर योर रिसेप्टर्स लाइक योर एम वन थ्री फाइव ऑड नंबर एम वन थ्री फाइव अल्फा वन एटी वन एंजियोटेंसिन वन एंजियोटेंसिन वन है ना योर टी एस एच मैथ्स राइट योर हिस्टामिन हिस्टामिन का एच वन वन इज द वेरी फेवरेट वर्ड हियर एंड सेरोटोनिन का फाइव एस टी टू ठीक सो दिस इज योर जीक्यूमिडिएटेड है ना जीक्यूमिडिएटेड रिसेप्टर्स Which is specific medication in this in the antiretroviral therapy regimen is most likely to cause hypertriglyceridemia. Hypertriglyceridemia is maximally associated with your protease inhibitor, and all the protease inhibitor they are all going to end with your navir, and right? so that is going to be your nelfinavir. Nelfinavir they will be associated with hypertriglyceridemia. Now tenofovir, tenofovir again, which type of drug is this? One of the nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Tenofovir NTRT, nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor. dolutegravir it's one of the integrase inhibitor integrase inhibitor and nevirapil it is one of the nnrti non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor this is mainly associated with rash they are mainly associated with your hepatotoxicity rash and hepatotoxicity okay a many patient on lithium therapy developed hypertension he was started on thiazide diuretics for hypertension after a few days he developed abdominal pain Vomiting along with coarse tremor. Which of the following could be the likely mechanism? Okay, so many patient he is taking lithium already, and he was started on thiazide diuretics. Always and always remember, guys, that whenever you start a patient on thiazide diuretics, any thiazides will they cause loss of sodium? They will be causing loss of sodium, right? We call them as a natriuresis. Natriuresis. Because of natriuresis, what will happen? There is decrease in the serum sodium. Body means sodium ki level ki kamy hogi. as a compensatory mechanism as a compensatory mechanism there will be increase in the sodium reabsorption from the tubules sodium reabsorption tubules se badh jayega and always remember inside the body because sodium lithium they belong to the same family in the periodic table always remember inside of the body your lithium and sodium or no is not differentiated body cannot differentiate whether it is lithium or sodium so lithium also utilizes the same channel for getting transported same as your lithium so what will happen as a compensatory sodium reabsorption uh, from the tubules along with the along with the lithium so lithium bhi uske sath hi chala gaya right lithium so lithium chala gaya uski jagah kai bar sodium jagah pe lithium chala jayega hai na and that can increase the risk of toxicity it can increase the risk of lithium ka toxicity so lithium mediated toxicity is mainly because of excessive reabsorption as a compensatory sodium reabsorption ki wajah se lithium bhi body mein aa jata hai now which of the following could be the likely mechanism for this interaction what could be the possible mechanism metabolism of the lithium inhibits the thiazide they are not enzyme inducer or inhibitor thiazide acts as an add on drug again dummy choice thiazide decrease the tubular reabsorption now is a thiazide decreasing the tubular reabsorption or increasing that if thiazide would decrease the reabsorption toxicity to hoga hi nahi there will be no toxicity right so thiazide actually increases the tubular reabsorption of lithium how it is increasing as a compensatory uh, sodium reabsorption ke through lithium bhi aa raha hai body theek hai which of the following column uh, and mark is correct option okay you have to match it it's like match the following hai na तो देखिए इसमें देर कैन बी मल्टीपल करेक्ट वन बट इफ यू टू चूज वन सिंगल वन यू विल बी एबल टू करेक्ट इट फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट अगर आपको कुछ नहीं आता है एटलीस्ट आपको इतना पता है पाइलो कार्पिन क्या पाइलो कार्पिन प्यूपिल पे काम करने वाला बिथानिकॉल ब्लाडर पे काम करने वाला ट्रक कॉल नजिक वेरेनिक्लीन ये निकोटीन को क्लीन कर देता है सो वट वी नो अबाउट वेरेनिक्लीन इट्स वन ऑफ द एंटी स्मोकिंग ड्रग सो फोर का ए फोर का वट वी नो ए इतना तो पता है वेरेनिक्लीन नो फोर का ए इज प्रेजेंट इन हाउ मेनी ऑप्शन स्मोकिंग सेसेशन के लिए बाकी कोई भी स्मोकिंग सेसेशन के लिए नहीं यूज करेंगे सी इन जेरोस्टोमिया यू कैन यूज बेथेनिकॉल पाइलोकार्पिन सेविमेल तीनों यूज कर सकते हैं बिकॉज दे आर ऑल एम थ्री एगोनिस्ट बट वेरेनिक्लीन इज द ओनली वन वेरेनिक्लीन इज द ओनली वन दैट इज यूटिलाइज फॉर द स्मोकिंग सेसेशन 
तो फोर का ए फोर का ए इज अवेलेबल ओनली इन टू ऑप्शन ऑप्शन नंबर ए ऑप्शन नंबर सी जहां पे मैंने डॉट दे दिया ऑप्शन नंबर ए एंड सी नाउ लेट्स रीड अदर ऑप्शन पाइलोकार्पिन इज अ ड्रग अमंग द अमंग ऑल ऑफ देम इट्स अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक इन अ पेशेंट विद द एंगल क्लोशर ग्लोकोमा है ना तो पाइलोकार्पिन इज यूज फॉर द ग्लोकोमा तो टू का हो गया सी टू का हो गया सी so i am also teaching how to you know approach this kind of question if they are asked in the examination 2 ka c so 2 ka c is present in how many option 2 ka c is present only in one option that is option number c and there you go you have your answer already ab kahin dekhna hi nahi aap ab kahin dekhna nahi baki definitely automatically wrong hoga dekh lete hai kaise bithanicol bithanicol mainly urine retention we can utilize as i told you that sevimelin pilocarpin bithanicol they all can be used in xerostomia but the drug of choice for xerostomia is always going to be sevimelin so you have to choose one best drug sevimelin so one ka b one ka b is available in option c two ka c there is pilocarpin used for the glaucoma 3d bethanicol is used for uh, retention because bethanicol is m3 agonist and four ka is mai aapko batai chuka vasomotor reversal of dale is seen in vasomotor reversal of dale whenever in presence of alpha blocker we give high dose of epinephrine there will be only fall in the blood pressure only fall in the blood pressure so fall in blood pressure with epinephrine in presence of alpha blocker this is the correct one hai na isko bolte hain dale's reversal phenomena mainly hai na kabhi bhi agar alpha blocker de diya in presence of epinephrine there will be only fall in the blood pressure that is uniphasic response normal person may in a normal epinephrine normal person may epinephrine will have biphasic response they will first you know let's say there is a normal uh, blood pressure here whenever epinephrine will be uh, introduced let's say there is a bp of 120 when epinephrine is introduced the bp will increase because alpha receptor alpha 1 mediated receptor uh, bp will increase so this can go to let's say 160 but when the uh, level of epinephrine comes down there is someone called sensitive receptor that is beta 2 right? so alpha is a strong receptor because they are more in number and beta 2 is a sensitive receptor that means they will respond at a very very lesser dose so at the lesser plasma concentration of epinephrine beta 2 will be stimulated and because of beta 2 mediated activity the bp will further fall down let's say going to 90 or 100 once the drug is totally washed out it will go back again to its normal that is let's say 120 so normal person may epinephrine will have biphasic response first increase then decrease first increase then decrease but if you are going to give epinephrine in presence of alpha blocker then epinephrine so bp ko uh, it won't be able to affect won't be able to increase only there is a fall in the blood pressure this concept of vasomotor reversal of dale or dale's reversal phenomenon we, we utilize mainly in presence with your pheochromocytoma where we always try to treat a patient of the pheochromocytoma uh, as a drug of choice drug of choice ka hota hai phenoxybenzamine phenoxybenzamine we never give phenoxybenzamine alone we never give phenoxybenzamine alone along with this we always add beta blocker and order always remains the same order always remains the same order remains the same that is going to be your alpha blocker followed by beta blocker hai na so agar aap sirf alpha blocker de dete hain so there are high chances you know beta mediated bp fall will be there in a patient with pheochromocytoma kabhi bhi ek drug nahi use karte hain we always use phenoxybenzamine with the beta blocker order always goes alpha blocker then beta blocker okay A 68 year uh, old male uh, with diagnosed with the infiltrative astrocytoma receiving palliative care develops cerebral edema IV mannitol therapy is started to relieve the symptom which of the following is the incorrect statement so mannitol is one of the osmotic diuretic definitely it's a correct statement it can also be used in some case of the drug overdosages okay let's uh, read other option it expands the intravascular fluid compartment definitely it increases it can be used to alleviate symptom of the acute pulmonary edema now whenever you have to do forced diuresis hai na kai bar kisi drug mein forced diuresis jab karna hota hai to wahan pe we can actually utilize in forced diuresis wale scenario mein we can actually utilize our diuretic like osmotic diuresis hai na to wahan pe use kar sakte hain now in acute pulmonary edema they can always see intravascular volume is already very high and if you are going to give a drug jo ki इन अ पेशेंट विद ऑलरेडी पलमनरी एडिमा वो फर्दर डिटेट करेगा इट विल वर्सन तो इट विल नॉट एलिवेट राधर इट विल वर्सन तो इट विल ऑल्सो वर्सन इट ऑल्सो वर्सन मैनिटोल ऑल्सो वर्सन कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर पेशेंट का कंडीशन सी एच एफ में भी नहीं देंगे सो दे आर एक्चुअली कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड मैनिटोल एज ए ड्रग मैनिटोल एज ए ड्रग विच इज ऑस्मोटिक डायरेटिक इट्स कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर Manitol is contraindicated in patient with the acute pulmonary edema. Manitol is a drug. It's a active cerebral bleed. Active 
सेरेब्रल ब्लीड उसमें भी नहीं देंगे बिकॉज अगेन दे आर ऑस्मोटी डायरेटिक और जहां भी जाएंगे दे विल पुल द वॉटर टूअर्स एंड सेल दे विल वर्स एंड द सेरेब्रल एडिमा इन दैट केस इन आरियो अ मदर ब्रिंग्स हर 10 ईयर ओल्ड सन to the clinic for multiple episode of bread wetting every night for the past uh, uh, two month the patient was prescribed desmopressin desmopressin is one of the synthetic vasopressin it's one of the v2 analog synthetic vasopressin the drug belongs to the class of vasopressin okay so they have given this information as well which of the following is not another indication of for the use of this class of drug which of the following is not an another indication von willebrand disease esophageal varices central diabetes symptoms ka to drug of choice hai एक्यूट पल्मोनरी एडिमा में नहीं यूज करते ना वी डू नॉट हैव एनी यूज ऑफ एक्यूट पल्मोनरी एडिमा वी टू एनालॉग का वन विल प्लांट डिजीज में वी कैन यूटिलाइज एंड आल्सो इन एसोफेजियल वेरिसेस वी आल्सो वी कैन यूटिलाइज है ना दे आर हैविंग वी टू रिसेप्टर एनालॉग है बट दे आल्सो हैव वी वन एनालॉग प्रॉपर्टी दैट विल बी कॉजिंग वैसो कॉन्स्ट्रिक्शन दैट इज व्हाई एसोफेजियल वेरिसेस वी आल्सो वी कैन यूटिलाइज लास्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज फॉल्स अबाउट द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल व्हिच इज फॉल्स अबाउट द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल Now clinical trial remember guys phase zero pharmacokinetic analysis is called micro dosing both the yes they are phase zero is a micro dosing analysis so usme pharmacokinetic analysis hota hai remember it's a non mandatory trial it's a non mandatory trial and this non mandatory trial it is mainly done on done on normal healthy volunteers it is mainly done on the normal healthy volunteers it is not done on the animal Phase four is post-marketing surveillance. Yes, that's also correct. You have to find out a false statement. Phase three, phase three may around three thousand patients are there, है ना? So sample size, if you are going to see sample size की बेसिस if you are going to see one, two, three, four, तो one में around पच्ची से one hundred twenty-five to one hundred तो around one hundred. Two में early part or late part, तो somewhere around two hundred to four hundred, so two hundred बढ़ा गया. Three में 1000 to 5000 i i used to say on an average around 3000 aapko yaad karna 3 me 3000 and 4 me there is no limitation on the sample size theek hai so 5 to 10 patients are taken no 5 to 10 patients per year so so jyada patient hote this is a very straight forward question phase 2 blinding is done yes phase 2 or phase 3 agar study design dekhna hai to this is one of the open level study phase 1 is one of the open level study phase 4 is also an open level open level ka matlab everyone is aware who is taking what kind of drug what is the possibility here Two and three, they are the one that will be requiring, you know, randomization. And for that, remember, for that, remember, blinding will be done. So initial condition, there will be single blinding, double blinding, and later on the phase two, uh, uh, phase three, maybe we have double blinding crossover. So again, blinding will be required in both the scenario. Actually, two or three, जो है दोनों ही blinding होता है. Two and three, they are almost same. It's just that three will be requiring more number of patient, and the, in majority of the condition, three is a multi-centric trial. Okay. So this will be everything in our uh, today's uh, TND. As I told you, and it's not a TND, but again, CBOT discussion. The clinical trial ka ek question tha. I hope all of you guys have got this one. Pulmonary edema, vaso, desmopressin ka there is no role, hai na? And pulmonary edema me again, mannitol has no role. Uh, acute pulmonary edema me, in fact, it can. Uh, You know, worsen the scenario. Then vasomotor reversal of Dale. का एक क्वेश्चन था तो total twenty one question हो गया है ना. Then uh, different uh, cholinergic drug के different uses as I have told you already. Here thiazide it is going to actually increase the tubular reabsorption of uh, lithium as a compensatory mechanism. Nelfinavir hypertriglyceride में एक साथ maximum होगा among all the antiretroviral drugs. AT one receptor is mainly mediated by GQ. Rather all others in this option is GI mediated. TV may which of the following will cause optic neuritis that is going to be ethambutol weak acid we always have either weak acid or weak base we don't have weak uh, no strong acid or strong base weak acid may we will be causing force alkaline diuresis aspirin can always precipitate bronchial asthma and samtos triad is uh, a triad of bronchial asthma aspirin sensitivity and polyp so aspirin always precipitate bronchial asthma remember lyme disease may doxycycline being the drug of choice it is a protein synthesis inhibitor targeting 30s ribosomal subunit Flicanide is class one C antihistamine, mainly a sodium channel blocker. Valproate, remember, it's a potent enzyme inhibitor. All other anti-epileptic drugs are mainly uh, your enzyme uh, inducer. Valproate is an enzyme inhibitor. Hydroxychloroquine associated with your bulls eye maculopathy. Cholesteramine, anti-dyslipidemic drug that is uh, preferred in pediatrics and pregnancy. Linagliptine, it's a gliptine that is uh, mainly safer in a patient with your uh, renal failure. 
एंड नॉन सेलेटिव बीटा ब्लॉकर इज कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड इन बीपीडी वाला सिनेरियो मैंने आपको बताया था ब्रोंकेलास्मा पेरिटल वस्कुलर डिजीज एंड डायबिटीज मेलाइटिस गोसरलिन जेनरल चैनल कैन बी यूटिलाइज इन योर प्रोस्टेटिक कार्सिनोमा डेल्टियाजेम कैन बी कॉजिंग कॉन्स्टिपेशन है ना Lopramide preferred drug in chemo induced diarrhea, right? So this was your 21 question that was asked in our today's session. I hope that you guys were got maximal correct. Wherever you made the mistake, wherever you think that uh, the mistake has happened, try to uh, reduce those silly mistake because the most common cause of mistake in your examination is not your mistake per se or your uh, lack of awareness about the question. The most common problem is the silly mistake. That is what we have to reduce, and that is why this computer based offline test is continuously pushing you to reduce your silly mistake. I'll see you in upcoming. class thank you very much